my aim in this video is to answer that question more holistically. Can you do both? What is more effective? Pros and cons to these things. And I think you get a lot of value out of this. What's going on guys and girls? Welcome back to another episode on the Falcon YouTube channel. Hope everyone's doing well. Excited for this episode because it's one of our most common questions. Mark, should I swing trade? Should I day trade? Should I do this? My aim in this video is to answer that question more holistically. Can you do both? What is more effective? Pros and cons to these things. And I think you get a lot of value out of this because there's an area, there's almost like a middle ground that people are missing out on. And you could capitalize so much more from a profit perspective if you know which one. So if you're someone coming to the channel for the first time or recently and you've been enjoying our content, if you want to keep in the loop of these videos, make sure that you subscribe, you take action to that so you don't miss a video and if you're thinking about getting involved in trading and you're wondering do i have the time to do that should i just swing trade my aim is to answer that in this video and i think that you'll get a lot of value from it so let's dig in i've got some chart work prepared for you guys so i've got pound dollar pound aussie and dollar yen here so let's keep it super simple swing trading versus day trading from a swing trading perspective what you're really looking to do is that at the end of day as you can see we're on a daily chart here you're looking at the end of the day close and then you're you're managing it more loosely. So in the sense that you have to deal with larger pullbacks. So let's say you're someone who you work a nine to five and or maybe even longer hours than that. You don't really have too much time to be by the charts and you're thinking, oh, could I trade or maybe I don't have enough time to do it. You can. It doesn't take as much time as what you think to place a trade. For example, let's say you're going to place a trade on pound dollar and you're looking to sell it. If you was going to swing trade it and we'll kind of take it back to roughly here let's say your system you was looking at a sell on this area some sort of resistance and you're looking to play that to the next range at this low if you're going to put a trade on what are the pros and the cons well if you day traded it you'd be able to go in the lower time frames and you would get tighter entries if you swing traded it you're going to wait for the end of the day so let's say you size this up and you looked at slightly larger stop loss so you're over 100 pips and you're looking to let's say this low you're targeting 3.8 so it's under a four to one just to get to this area so you've got to move all of this way just to get 3.8 percent to me that's not worth it and there is a middle ground to it guys so how i would approach it is like this if you're going to swing trade yes you may want to manage it more loosely because right i can't be there i can't manage the trade fair enough you could do that but how about going into advanced swing trading where you get the best of both, which means that you get to enter on the lower time frames, which, yes, up front requires a little bit more effort. However, you get more of the risk to reward and then you can still manage it the same way where you can just check it at the end of the day. So let's take a look. If we were to look at the same thing, we're looking at the entry here at the end of the day. Look how far we've moved here. There are other ways to enter that. Even again on the four hour chart, let's say you was looking to swing it there. There is easy, easily a refined entry just there and then. Just instead of here with 120 inch pips, we're moving it to there, which means our stop is tighter to about, let's call it 70. So it's a bit more of a swing. It's not like super lower time frames with really tight stop losses. It's the same type of thing you're using the four hours. So instead of the daily, the four hour. So if we just then take that back to where we are, what does that change our risk reward? Remember, we was looking at 3.8, nearly 4%. Now we're looking at 7.5 or 7.4 so you see the difference there right you see the difference we've nearly doubled we've nearly doubled our return just by being smarter so instead of that that is all we needed so there's pros and cons to it but in my opinion if you can refine it and put a little bit of extra effort the reward is huge because the difference of all of that move for just 3.8 percent versus 7.4 well, then you could refine it further, right? So that's just on the four hour. That's one element to it. Well, on the one hour chart, you could have gone tighter, right? There could have been areas in which that really and truly around here. So it means your stop goes to about there. Let me go back to the daily. What have we got? So instead of 7.4, we're looking at 12.3, right? So look at that all the way through. You've gone from 3.8 to then 7.4 to 12.3. You're targeting the same thing. You're just refining it further. So you can still manage it the same way. I'm not saying try to, uh, you're saying, right, but I haven't got the time. I haven't got time to be able to check the charts. That's fine. Spend a little bit more time. Work with what you've got because everybody has the time to do that. You don't have to be there every five minutes to take the trade. You can just check it over every four hours, right? You will have a small opportunity. If you're really serious about becoming a trader, you have the time to be able to make that work. And then you get involved in it and then you just manage it accordingly. So imagine all that move plays out and that was all the difference that so you had to spend 
you know, an extra two hours throughout this whole process just to refine the entry a little bit further, but then you walk away with 12.3 instead of 3.8. Big, big difference to your account. And then that way, let's say you've got 100K account, you're not then stressing over these trades because big, big difference. You don't have to have a crazy account to then be able to make this work for you and generate that extra wealth, that extra income. So that's how I would approach that, keeping it nice and simple. I personally wouldn't just swing trade. There's a time and a place when the daily candle will be a lot smaller, so your stop will be refined naturally. However, for the majority of these daily rejections, you're looking at much wider stops and you can achieve the same thing just by being a little bit more refined. So from that time perspective, that is how I would approach it if I was really that kind of strict for time and I literally couldn't check it all the way throughout the day, I would do that. So that would be my approach on that. Have another example and let's say pound Aussie. So this is more of an example that you could actually approach right now. So for those of you swing traders out there that just purely kind of label yourself as a swing trader, be careful with the labels, right? Don't limit yourself to one box. So this is a trade that I'm looking at now that you could essentially swing trade it. So we're looking at this structure. So we focus on patterns. So if you're coming to the channel for the first time, we focus on price structure, market structure, price action, nature of the market and pattern identification. We we look at patterns in a more of a holistic point of view. We don't look at it from just a simple basic chart pattern. There's much more depth that goes into it. But if we just take this as a continuation pattern, price moves down, corrective structure, we're looking for this next run, at least to the bottom of that pattern. Now, if you were to, let's say, swing trade that from a daily perspective, we're getting very close to this area. By the time this is rejected on the daily, for example, price could move up, we could close down here. Let's say we've closed down there and you're looking to swing trade it. You're looking at, let's say, you want your stop protected because remember, first and foremost, your stop protection is key. You could be looking at like 250 pip stop. So to play this whole move, you might be thinking, well, 4.7 is still decent. Yes, in general terms, it is. However, you could achieve the same thing by just being more refined on the lower time frame, just timing it better, looking at, let's say, and this is still swing-ish because you're looking at 70 pip stop. Our average sort of stop placement is anywhere between kind of 20 to 40 pips because we're refining them even lower but achieving the same bigger picture. Look at the difference, right? 19%. Uh, that is a big difference to your risk to reward. Still manage it the same way. Still don't check it all the time. You can check it at the end of the day. But what I would say first and foremost, the, the big tip that most swing traders are missing out on is that their entry point. And if they just put a little bit more effort into the entry and then just manage it from a swing trading perspective, you're doing the, you're doing the same work, right? It's just a few more hours extra in your refinement, being a bit more precise. But what are the pros and the cons to that? If you would have waited for the full daily close, don't get me wrong, there will be certain situations in which that because you have gone into the lower time frames and you've refined it a little bit more, what will naturally happen is that if you're too tight with that and it happens to tag you in, tag you out, you could have kind of taken a step back and said, if I would have just swing traded it, wait for the daily close and done absolutely nothing and didn't go into the lower time frames, I would have had at least 4% instead of 100% of nothing. Yes, that is true. However, over the long run of the year, you will make far more risk to reward on your refinements versus the rare occasion that happens. So that's kind of already factored in and covered as well. So this is one to keep an eye on on Pound Aussie, which we're looking at as well. And again, sometimes when you're waiting for the daily rejection, daily rejection is so huge that you're, if you was to swing it, you're looking at like a 500 pip, 400 pip, 250 pip stop loss. And then it's skewed your risk to reward. It's not even worth it at that point. So then you have to wait again. So refinement on the lower time. See it as advanced swing trading. That's how I would put it. So that is it on pound Aussie and dollar yen. Another example of this. So this is a trade that we took. So if you was to swing that here, Right, this is the daily rejection there. So let's say, for example, your goal is to take price action to this first target and then the second target, which is what we was looking at. If you were to swing trade that and you looked at it like this, where's your stop protected? Call it about 75, right? That could be tight. It could be 70 to 80. It means your target from here to here is 1.7. The risk reward is not worth it, right? The bigger picture is if this plays out, then 4.5. And even then, all of that move just for that, when that could be refined so much more. So if we go to the four hour chart, let's see. We had our refinements earlier, right up there, even after this close, or even after this close, you can refine that. So you're looking for the same thing, right? You're looking at, let's say a 42 pip stop instead. And this is still being quite wide with it. 
let's look at the difference risk reward so you manage it from a swing trading perspective rather than 1.6 or 1.7 you're looking at 3.7 and for the bigger trade instead of like four or five percent you're looking at a nine to near near enough a nine to one so you see how that changes a lot more and if you refined it on the one hour which was tighter we, i walked away with 3.5 on this one which could have been a little bit more however let's say you took it like this and your first target is here and managing on a swing, just to emphasize that, managing on a swing, you're not checking the charts every hour or anything like that. Instead of 1.7, you're looking at the same thing for the same reasons. You just refined it a bit earlier. Yes, there's not the solid daily rejection, but you've obviously factored in your analysis. It's near enough for 7 to 1. And if it plays out for the bigger trade, longer term, and sometimes it will, over a 15 to 1. So you see how it's almost like you're doing the work anyway and you're looking at the bigger picture and you're analyzing that right yet you're not refining your entry it's almost like you're doing yourself a disservice you could capitalize on so much more you're not you're not adding more risk and like i would say the only con i would see to it is you have to put a little bit more effort on the front end which you already understand anyway because you are a trader and then secondly there will be small circumstances in which that because you've refined it you might have you might start refining it a bit too tight and then on the intradays, you're tagged in and you're tagged out. And then you would look back and see, well, if I would have done nothing and just kind of put a wider stop loss on and left it, I would have at least made 4%. Yes, but if you look at these risk rewards, there's going to be times where you make 7% instead of 2, 15% instead of 1.8. There's going to be so much difference in the one or two scenarios throughout the year, or even three or four scenarios out the year that it happens your risk to reward is so much more in your favor. Then you can grow your wealth. It's much more scalable. You'll be happier. You're not adding any crazy risk to it. So you can kind of do both. There's a bit of a blend to it. I personally wouldn't just swing trade. I would always be refining the entries. So you've got to see it differently. Intraday, naturally, you're in, you know, one, like one to two hours, four hours, six hours. You could be in and out that same day or within a small time frame. When you're swing trading, you might be wondering, well, how long would I swing trade for? really and truly it could be three days it could be five days it could be a month right it can be longer term you could stay in the trade and keep it but you've got to deal with those larger pullbacks so i would approach it as more as as a hybrid i'm not a big fan of hybrid in terms of strategies but when it comes to actually this there's a much more refined way guys so that's how i would treat it do i personally swing trade I don't because I have the time throughout the day to refine those entries. And don't get me wrong, there's there's pros and cons to that as well in the sense that there has been times when I've looked back and I could have literally almost swing trade the structure in how we do things on the four hour. And if I wasn't on the one hour, if I wasn't on the 15 minute and I just stuck to the four hour, I still would have made 7% over let's say a week just by doing that and been way more relaxed to it. However, it evens itself out throughout the year because I'm refining and because I'm in the lower time frames, the risk reward is much more within our favor. So we have that within our strategies, a long term approach as well. Some people do a bit of both. And I recommend if you're going to do that, you do it on two separate accounts because if you kind of bring your swing trading into your, your intraday trading, it will skew with your mind because let's say you take two trades one of these trades you're taking for the long term you're kind of going to swing it and the other one you're going to be more intraday you're going to manage it more aggressively you're going to see both of those trades making profit and you end up closing both of them and you forget the reason as to why you done the first one in the first place so if you do do that have two separate accounts much easier to do it that way so my my kind of conclusion to all of this can you do both yes you can but i think the hybrid method here to refine it is much more efficient much more profitable much more effective so if you're someone right now that is looking to get involved in trading and you're looking to think uh, can i do this while i work a nine to five job absolutely you can but you have to have a method that is sustainable one of the big drawing factors as to why people love trading the falcon way to do this as you can see you can swing you can get involved in the intradays. You can manage it more aggressively. You can manage it more loosely. You can set your trades even every after four hours. So if you're thinking, I just don't have the time, everybody has time. You're telling me you can't check your charts, check the phone every four hours. Everybody's got the time to do that. Very, very small percentage of people don't have the time to do that. And if you plan ahead, you don't have to spend as much time as what you think. You'll spend more time learning to get your mindset right and understand why you're doing what you're doing. But once you've cracked it and you've got the skill, it's actually a lot more efficient. Like. I don't sit there all day long spending hours and hours in front of the charts. For example, I'm looking at this trade for today, pound Aussie, right? I'm looking for pound Aussie today. And I'll be looking anywhere in this area to look for a sell and look for a sell here. Once I'm in, I'm in, I then leave it. I'm, I may not trade for two days, right? I'm then managing that position. Another one is pound Kiwi, right? Which is 
I was looking at this earlier, so had the order on, not triggered in. So I was looking for this trade to the downside, didn't get triggered into the trade, right, order off. Now we refine because we're looking at the bigger picture of pound kiwi to come to the downside. So again, this could be another one that some people could swing because you're looking for this trade to the downside and you may get your entry point. So some people, again, would have done a swing off of this, this rejection there. They would have got involved here like so. Stop above there, but look at that. You're looking at, to be safe with it, 130 pips. Your target is here for 5.2. I would personally rather miss out on just that and rather refine. So I'm essentially swinging it in the sense of looking at the bigger picture in the first place. However, I'm going to refine that on the lower time frame. So I'd rather do that when there's so much more risk to reward for all of that move. So keeping it super simple, guys. Short entries, you can do both. You can really capitalize on these moves and I love it, but just find that hybrid. So hopefully this resonates with you. It answers your questions. For those of you that are really looking to get involved in trading, hopefully you've been taking tons of value away from our content. I'm really excited for the things that we're gonna be bringing out as well. We had plans in the works to do quite a few series and we're working on those nows. So they're gonna they're gonna be flowing out nicely. And I can't believe that the channel has grown so much. I mean, we're approaching the 50K milestone as well. So either at the time of this video, we might be there or getting very close to it. However, it's such a cool feeling to see that play out for the effort that we're putting on a regular basis for a place that you can come back to this channel, mindset, technicals, be there for you and just thinking about things in a much more sustainable way. That was the thing that we really wanted. So if you are watching our content on a regular basis, make sure that you're subscribed, that you're in the loop with these things because we've got a lot in store for it. So thank you so much for the love and support. We really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks guys.